Uh, George Parr, uh, you are an investment banker. Uh, yes, I am. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, of course, we've just had an extremely serious banking crisis. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of people in the city, like yourself, who earn uh, millions in salaries and bonuses. So... <laughs> So, uh, shouldn't you have seen this coming? Well, it, it is true. Uh, we didn't actually foresee it in the strict sense of the word. Or in any sense or of the word. Or in any sense of the word, no. no we, 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 we didn't foresee it, but when it happened, we did notice it. <laughs> which, is, which is almost as good, isn't it? Well, we just had the first run on a bank in this country yeah. for 140 years. Mm. You're a banker. What is your reaction? Well, of course, we all, I mean, everybody in banking, we all felt deeply embarrassed. You're embarrassed? I'm embarrassed, yes. Certainly. I mean, I, I, I hardly dared take my Ferrari in for its service yesterday. <laughs> What are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do about it? The bloody thing needs a service. <laughs> you know? I've only got two Ferraris. Yes, but, I mean, what was the cause of oh, this? Oh, would you uh, about, it was about the banking crisis? Well, of course, yes. it wasn't my fault. It wasn't banking's fault. It was entirely the fault of Mervyn King. But he's just put... Uh, ten billion pounds mm. into the banking system. Yes. Isn't that what you were asking for? Yes, but it's, far, it's, it's only far too late, you see. I mean, no, no, nobody wants it anymore. You should have done it <laughs> much, much, much earlier, because it was obvious that the Northern Rock was getting into difficulties. It was obvious that most people in the city were borrowing too much and lending too, too riskily. Including you? Well, I, I was just doing what everybody else was doing. That's how, <laughs> that's how we operate in the city. And, and what I want to know is why why didn't he do it earlier? Why wait until the entire banking sector looked as stupid as it actually was? So what you're saying is that although Mervyn King might not have been able to prevent the crisis, mm. he could have prevented the spectacle of people queuing up in the high street to try and get their money out. Exactly, exactly. Yes, and people were queuing at two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning, yes. I mean, the British people have only ever done that uh, for Tim Henman, and look how badly that always turned out. <laughs> But these scenes must have been humiliating for the banking industry. We don't like to see it. It makes us look silly. Silly? Silly. Well, what about the banks falling over themselves to pick up these packages of dodgy mortgages and they have very little idea how much they're worth, if they're worth anything at all? Well, that's not silly. That's a sophisticated market in operation. <laughs> So you don't think there is anything fundamentally wrong with the banking system? Look, there are some very, very clever men in the city. I mean, <clears throat> you, uh, just an example, the fact that Alliance and Leicester lost a third of its value in, in a day and the very next day got a third of its value back, that shows the system is fundamentally sound and rational. Yes, but can you explain why, at the beginning of the Northern Rock crisis, mm. the government made an offer which didn't reassure the public. The, uh, the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer himself said people shouldn't worry because their, their money was perfectly safe. Well, that's, that's very simple. And the public are used to the government telling them lies. <laughs> you mean if the government is prepared to tell lies about the reason for invading another country? Mm -hmm. Uh, they wouldn't be too bothered about lying about people's money. People's money, no, exactly. What Alistair Darling should have done was to say to everybody, go down to Northern Rock now, take every last penny out. <laughs> you see? People have said, well, there must be some reason the government's getting, telling me to take my money out. I'm going to leave it where it is. <laughs> And then the whole thing might have just sort of faded away. It just got blown up, but it should never have happened in the first place. I mean, it was only because some bright spark said, how much do you think these American houses are actually worth? And, of course, as soon as they asked that question, we all panicked. <laughs> because you found out? No, we, 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 we didn't find out. We still haven't found out how much they're worth, if anything. Despite what you call a, a very, very sophisticated market. Look, we went on the, the assumption that property values always go up. Well, that's not very sophisticated, it's is a, it? It's as sophisticated as we ever get. 
yes, but I mean, why, uh, if this is the case, and, and that's, that, that's what happened, uh, every time you sell someone a financial product, you put a big warning on it, saying, well, your investments may go down as well as go up. Yes, well, we have to do that. It's one of the pettifogging regulations. But it's, only meant, it's only meant for ignorant punters. <laughs> So it doesn't apply to you? Certainly not, certainly not. And, and of course, the punters themselves are now uh, uh, reassured because the government have guaranteed their deposits. Yes, and also put £10 billion pounds into the banking sector. Yes, Do you yes. think that was absolutely necessary? It was necessary as a symbolic gesture because um, <laughs> what the market needs is confidence. Whose confidence? My confidence. <laughs> The confidence that I have a 35-room house to go to with six cars in the garage and a private helicopter and that I'll earn enough of my Christmas bonus to pay my Filipino staff £12 a month. <laughs> but these are huge sums that we're talking about here. Yeah. I mean, where in the end is all this money going to come from? Well, I don't know wherever governments get their money. Taxation, I suppose. I, I don't know anything about tax. I never pay any. <laughs> But, but don't you think it's wrong that extremely rich people, people that run, I don't know, private equity funds, um, and people like you, hardly pay any tax at all? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The city is far too valuable to the British economy. In any case, as we keep saying, if you tax us, we'll just go abroad. And that is not an idle threat. We can go and wreck somebody else's financial system. <laughs> Finally... Uh... Uh, can we talk about moral hazard? About what, sir? <laughs> uh, moral hazard. No, sorry, I know what hazard means. What's the other word? <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, the point about moral hazard is that the thought is that executives uh, like yourself We'll go on making more and more stupid and more and more risky loans in order to put up the profits of their bank because when everything goes wrong, the Bank of England is going to come along and bail them out. Mm, yeah. Well, I certainly hope so. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Look, I don't want to be insulting, but it does seem to me that you haven't learned anything from this whole episode. On the contrary, I've learned one very important lesson. And what is that? And that is, if you're going to make a cock-up, be sure you make it an absolutely enormous cock-up, because then the government will bail you out. <laughs> so, Scott, thank you very much. Thank you.